Separating all the minds from the men Breaking it down from beginning to the end Got their finger on the pulse of every trend It's deep inside me when they looking through the lens Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's been a minute. Um, we've basically been in the lab talking behind the scenes for a lot of stuff yes, through the lens with Steven and with Talik and me, Bronson C, the producer, editor, doing all the other stuff. And we're going to get into it. Today we talk about sports. Yes, yeah, sports. You know, we're definitely going to talk about basketball, but, you know, overall there's a lot of stuff going on in sports. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is this is a new segment we're doing called Movement movement or moment or moment or movement wherever way you want to go with it and we're going to talk about historically black colleges and universities it seems like it's now becoming a popular thing to you know or is becoming more into the conversation about star athletes coming from high school and going to historically black colleges to um, participate in sports there instead of going to the traditional like um, dukes or clemson's or things like that so I want to start with Stephen, and Stephen is going to a uh, McCoon maker. He committed to going to Howard University. Is this a movement or a moment? You got two minutes to tell me. Um, I think this is this is going to be a movement, uh, more so because uh, Mikey Williams. Um, I think he's. He's a top five recruit in the class of uh, um, 2024, I believe, or 2023. And um, he's been talking about uh, being recruited by HBCUs and going to, going to an HBCU for the past couple of months. And um, I just think that, and be, since he was able, been, has been able to talk about uh, going to an HBCU, and now we see McCool Maker, who is a top 20 recruit, who actually um, committed to an HBCU? I think that th those two factors will, will potentially will be leading to um, high-level recruits thinking about going to HBCUs for the long haul. Being, because th this is the argument that 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 they basically that I see that they have and they're thinking as well. As a high-level athlete, the mm -hmm. potential of you going to um, the NBA is very very Likely. Whether or not you go to um, a high a high level D one school, a mid major, or a low major, whatever overseas G League, the high, the level the potential uh, of you going to the NBA is very very high. So if if I can do that by uplifting uh, a historically black black college, why not let, why not have me do that? So I think it's a very good um, play for for a lot of these athletes and. Um, I think this will, we'll be seeing a lot of this going forward. All right, Talik, what do you think? Movement or, or moment? I think for right now, this is a moment. The only way I truly believe that this could become a movement is if a bigger player than, than Maker uh, commits, if that's how you pronounce his name. Yes, he is a top 20 recruit in the class, but if we're talking about, like, a player with a lot of clout and a lot of attention, you have to look at a player like Mikey Williams, who has uh, over 300K followers on Instagram. That's what, that's what we have to look at. Also, I, it could become a movement because I'm not really worried about HBCUs, gyms being 2,700, Cause, cause let me tell you this. Once, once the once the big players commit, the money is gonna start rolling in automatically. Automatically, once the big players commit, the money is gonna start rolling in to fund. If you can fund a new gym, you can fund this. We see how these high school players have such a big following that they could that they could bring to this college. So I don't see why it can become movement, but it is not. It has to start with a big player such as Steve says, as of Mikey Williams. Um, this is my thoughts. Um, and you made, you made, um, reference to how big the, the gym is. Howard University's, the gym that they play basketball in is only 27, only 2,700 people. Um, that's nothing. You know what I mean? Honestly, that's, that's really nothing. And what you, you made a point, the money can't come running in. But if, if these players are one and done players, 
You know what I mean? They're not going to – the money coming in, it's going to take four or five years before they can build new arenas and stuff like that. Obviously, they, you know, Howard University could go play with Georgetown plays, you know, split a schedule at um, I think the Verizon Center downtown in Washington, D.C. But the reality is it's going to take a minute. I think if for, for me, right now, it's a, it's a moment. If it's going to become a movement, it's going to take a situation like – um, the Fab Five. We know with the Fab Five, when you know with uh, Chris um, Weber and you know Jalen Rose and all of them. You hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, you, you know, you, you remember them when they went to uh, Michigan? Michigan. All, yeah, mm-hmm. all five of them went at one time. It's gonna take five players one time to go to a situation um, to really make an impact. One player. He might add – he's definitely going to help add some more wins. But here's, here's some other facts about – particularly Howard University. Um, the gym, we already talked about the size of the gym. That's not really a big, big thing, you know what I mean? But the last time Howard University appeared in the NCAA tournament was twice. They only appeared twice. was 1992. 1992 was the last time. The team last year was 4-29. and 4-29. and 29. In the last 10 years, they've been 500 twice over the last – and all the other years, 7 to 12 wins. So in the last 10 years, maybe 7 to 12 wins and um, only 500 twice, like 16 wins here, six, 17 wins here, you know, 17 and 17, 16 and 16, I think the last I'm, time I saw it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure – I just want to point out there, I don't think that – he's that good enough to bring them to the tournament. I'm pretty sure his, his mind when he was think, making this decision, I don't think he was worried about, like, I knew he, I, I don't know if he, if, looking from my perspective, I think that this was a premeditated thing. He knew that it had to start somewhere. I don't think he, I don't think we're off the back, he's like, yo, I'm going to go in here first year and win the championship. I think he knew this would have took some time to build HBCU colleges back into the tournament, stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure he knew that wins and the championships wasn't going to come first or second year. I think he knew this was going to take time, but it just had to be done eventually. I, I, I agree with you. It has to be done. Somebody has to go out there and do it. But here's my thing. If you're – think about it. You're How, how old are you now? 20, 21? 19. 19. Okay, 19. Don't be pushing my age yet, bro. <laughs> so, look. So, look. 18 years old. I remember when I was 18 years old. You know what I mean? 18 mm-hmm. years old or coming out of college. And, and you're looking at the landscape. In his situation, he might be a one and done, go to the NBA most likely. You know what I mean? But looking mm-hmm. at the situation, it's like, you know, I can go to a Duke. I can go to these universities that have all the, all the facilities, everything I need to prepare myself for that next level. Howard University might give me, the you know, some – make me more aware of my culture, who I am as a person, but is it going to prepare me for my career? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do they have – beyond just the, the, the team not being good or the facility um, not being um, big enough, do they have the things in place to make me a professional basketball player? at the end of the day, you know what I mean? And that's what you got to think about. You know what I'm saying? If I'm going to be a rocket scientist, I'm not, I'm not going to go to some bootleg school for a degree. I'm going to go try to go to the best because I want to be around the best to prepare me for those situations. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so I, I understand it needs to start with somebody, but I think to really to make it a movement, five, ten players, say we're committing because then his other thing what's this level of competition he's playing against he's just you know what i mean like that's the he, thing though. that's the thing once you get these the, the a big reason why um why howard's record is was so bad was because they were trying they had to play uh power power schools to obtain the money to keep their their program afloat so they were playing schools that were way better than them without the without the same level of competition um so once they once once you get the players that can compete with the power fives power tens i mean the power five conference and schools then you'll be you want one you'll be you'll be playing competition that will prepare you to be the best player that you can be 
and two, the program will 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 um be become better with the money that they'll be generated. Mm-hmm. And and by yeah, getting this recruit, they don't have to they they, they don't have to travel. I, I believe they didn't tra- they didn't have a home game for like a month and a half, and that yeah. was because mm-hmm. of the, the, the money mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. So so once by getting this recruit, they don't have to travel so far. The schools will come to them and give them the money. But do you th- do you think would you want to make at yeah, no. eighteen years old make that sacrifice? Would you want to be like I'm the guinea pig to do this, and then whoever knows what the wear and tear on your body to do that because you might you're one and done. You know this this kid might not stay for he's not gonna stay for four years. You know what I mean? I wanna I wanna I wanna yeah. say I wanna say cream. I understand your point, but I feel like when you're a, a top fifty player, top forty player. And the uh, goal, there are always going to be trainers who train NBA players, who trained good, good NBA players who are going to want to train regardless. Mm-hmm. I understand the point of, like, is the college preparing you? Like, like, like I understand the point, like, that the college college should prepare you. The, the, mm-hmm. the, the, order, the, the college that you're going to should prepare you itself. But I'm pretty sure, like I said, I understand that the Howard never probably I don't I don't know if it's a fact, but they haven't made any NBA players. And their program is probably not as good as a North Carolina and Oregon or a or a Duke or something like that. But when you're a, a player in the country, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, there are gonna be trainers who trained even NBA players who are gonna be yeah. throwing themselves at you. But I understand yeah, but I understand your point though. Uh, you, you're absolutely right. I'm just saying that when you're that player. You're gonna always have a, a trainer that could train you. That's a great trainer. That, that's true. What's his name from um, 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 Memphis when he decided? You know, it actually look. We we thought it was crazy that he left Memphis. You know, with all the scandal stuff mm-hmm. going around. But then with the season being shut down, it made you know it worked out for him. You know, and and, yeah, and but he but he ran this season. You know, we we don't know. You know, yeah, we don't even know if there's going to be basketball in the fall. So many schools, are, Ivy League already said, we're not playing basketball. We're not playing no fall sports. We're going to move that to the spring. And others are saying it's going to be in conference anyway. You know what I mean? So the reality of, you know, he can go, but most likely it might just be, it might it might really turn out to be nothing. You know what I mean? It might not really hurt him because he's not going to probably really be, the team might not really play like that. You know what I mean? Because if they do, it might just be mm-hmm. like other schools. You know, and he might become, it might be turn into a John Morant situation, uh, where he mm. he elevates the school really big. You know what I mean? Like he, if you really that type of player to, to take it, you know. But it's just, it's just mm. that I, I just know how I felt at that age, and I, and I to make that decision, it takes a lot more. I think you have to think more beyond just basketball, but at the same time, thinking from a basketball perspective, that's what it's I'm like, saying. You know, I, I would would I. Would I do that? I'm not sure. And I'm not sure a lot of other kids are going to make this jump yet, especially now with Corona. If, if, if we have coronavirus, I think this might be more of a movement. But because of Corona and all this uncertainty, I think a lot of I think a lot of players. Um, that's why we see a lot of players going into the G League because it's like you know what I should go get paid right now because I have no there's no guarantee I'm going to play college basketball next year. Why waste? I could get paid right now. And just sit on the sidelines, you know what I mean. So that's just my thoughts. Yeah. Well, I, I think it, it's it's a it's it's a movement because I, I, one of the questions we we were, we, were, we posed to each other was um, can can the HBCU support these athletes, right? Um, I I think I was looking up um, the capacity of a lot of these schools. Um, a lot, a majority of majority of HBCUs are like. Let, let me give you a few. North Carolina Central holds thirty five hundred. Um, Bethune Cookman holds three thousand. Morgan State holds forty forty two thousand. Perry View holds sixty five hundred. There's only like, from what I looked at, there's only two schools that hold over twenty thousand, and that's North Carolina. A and T State and North Norfolk State, which holds thirty thousand. So, but those is that, two, is that, is my, is it, is it a basketball arena, or are you talking about hundreds, or are you talking about 
thousand, like you know, because Howard University is twenty seven. Thirty thousand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, Norfolk State holds thirty thousand, and North Carolina A and T holds twenty one or twenty one thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and they're both in the MEAC. So, uh, which is um, Howard's conference as well. So, if you if you look at that, not you don't have to go to the you don't have to go to the schools that don't hold um, twenty thousand plus. You could go to a Norfolk State and you can go to a, a North Carolina State. Um, mm-hmm. So those are the, those are the two schools, and the, those two schools finished second and third in the MEAC. So, when we talk about can can um HBCUs hold um what do we hold um these athletes to a, a higher standard and can support these athletes I think there's a couple of schools that can really support these athletes and really will have the resources to support these athletes not not necessarily you won't be at a disadvantage by going to HBCU rather than a power five conference school yeah, I think, definitely Howard. I don't know if you ever actually been to Howard, but my you know I have my fam been to Howard. My sister went to Howard. I have you know I have lots of family. I've been to Howard Homecoming. I was there. You know when when I was around your age, I was there. Um, so I've been. To, and there's a reason. Why, you know, there's you know, Biggie School also about uh-huh. Howard Homecoming. You know what I mean? Like I. I, I got a, I was I got, there. I got to visit Howard, but I ain't go. I ain't going for basketball. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but but how Howard is Howard is definitely. Here's the thing with Howard. It they call it the mecca, and uh, and because you think about it, it's a black university in the middle of the hood in the black city. You know, well DC's yeah. becoming more of a gentrified city now. But um, back when I was going, it was definitely you know it was it was my boy said Chocolateville. You know what I mean. All types of shades of people are black, you know. But um, the thing with Howard, because there's so many famous black people who have gone there, if this, if yeah. if if athletes make a commitment, I can see the influx of money coming from them to support to support this. You know what I mean? And then here's the other fact that here's the other thing that Georgetown, in the same city, has not been good for years, you know what I mean? So here's an opportunity for Howard to come up and be like, yo, we here too. And maybe be able to play at like the Verizon Center or someplace, another arena in the city mm-hmm. besides their own home arena, just because the, the influx of people, you know, who's interested in watching yeah. their basketball games. Because I, I sat in that arena, I sat in that arena at Howard, it's not that big at all, you know what I mean? So, um, movement, movement, a mm-hmm. moment, and this, and this oh, is the first. The first, the first talk about movement in a moment. I guess somebody else to say, um, to Lee? I was gonna say, just like I said in the beginning, it definitely can become movement. If bigger players commit, once bigger players commit, the money mm-hmm. will start rolling a hundred percent guaranteed. Mm-hmm. All right, this is through the lens with Steven, Kareem, and Talik. And we'll see you next time. Yes, yes sir. sir. Separating all the mice from the men Breaking it down from beginning to the end Got their finger on the pulse of every trend It's deep inside me when they looking through the lens